Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Mini, True Nerd, and welcome back to Orwell, because Orwell Episode 2 has just been released. Because, yeah, they kind of do the Orwell games a little bit episodically. So the first episode was two weeks ago, I did do a video on that, and now Episode 2 has just occurred. Just to get you caught up, in case you've forgotten any of the details, because it was a couple of weeks ago, yes, indeed, it gives you a nice summary when you log back in. So, our agent, and also Pargeezy in general, he was playing both sides, potentially, went missing the online newspaper The National Beholder, received a recording of a telephone call between him and Raban Vart right before his vanishing. The office decided to intervene and look for Oleg Bakay with the aid of Orwell. After having located Oleg Bakay, we sent an intervention team to retrieve him. Yeah, sure you did. He was located in the ruins of a Prava secondary school, and Raban Vart released a photo of our intervention team's actions, which was like, you know, murdering him. Important thing to kind of focus on there. Taken through surveillance cameras on the People's Voice, his kind of inflammatory blog, and blamed the nation of eliminating a party. Gizian officer. So yes indeed, Raban Vart, who's kind of got a little bit of a hang-up against the nation because of a tragedy involving a school he was running at the time. Though, yeah, we're not quite sure who's necessarily the good guy or the bad guy yet. Everyone's got pluses and minuses. Well, Oleg Bakay's unlikely to show up much again because, you know, he was just murdered by my boss, so that's unfortunate. But now, we've probably got rioting on Pargesian Street and a very real possibility of the nation and the Pargesians kind of falling out a bit and maybe, you know, rioting, war, etc. Generally, it's bad. Let's move on and see what's next. Episode 2, Antithesis. So, Ampleford's back, she's not been fired, she probably should have been, because she ordered, uh, you know, Bacay to be murdered, and it turns out the whole thing was a trap, and murdering him was the worst possible thing we could have done, but no matter. So, there's massive fallout due to our little intervention, the National Beholder is met with public distrust, and by extension, so is the government. Our unorthodox approach to solve the situation has been met with scrutiny. You're using a lot of euphemisms there, Ampleford. Quite a few euphemisms for the murder that you did on another nation's sovereign soil. And indeed, the two leaders of the nations, Cassart and Blaine, are going to try and meet up and sort it all out. But that might, uh, yeah, that might not necessarily go so well. So, next thing's next, we need to keep an eye on Raban Vart. And I imagine we also need to keep an eye on the other editors on his newspaper. I imagine that's what we'll be digging into today, figuring out what's what exactly. So, let's go over to the reader and figure out, yes, what's going on on his Twitter and his blog. So why is the National Beholder staying silent about the latest government scandal linked to something? Yep, that'll be the article in question. Fine, we'll get back to that in a second. Let's just uh, finish up with that there tweet. This betrayal by our government will not go unpunished. The people's voice will fight back against so-called President Kassat. Now bear in mind, we've got to be very careful about what we do and don't upload, because when we upload something, time passes by. But go on. Promised his followers to attack Kassat today. Yeah, that's probably important, yes. So, my main priority is I need to find out what this attack comprises of. Fine, so we can get into the back end of his blog. Oh, well, isn't that just bloody convenient? Let's see what's going on here exactly. Uh, Raban, what, what time is it? Time to wake up, brother. Hey, what is it? Uh, K Karen? Ilya? Why a conference call? What's going on? My love, my brother. I called early so I could warn you both. Warn us? What about? You both are aware of the storm yesterday's announcement has created. Y yeah, there was hardly a way around it with social media. I, I still don't quite get how you pulled that off. These photos, how did you get them? Were the shelter's cameras still working? Is, is this why you kept that old notebook? Don't rack your brains over it. I only did the necessary thing to expose the lies of the National Beholder. Now, with the world seeing the Beholder for what it really is, and finally shifting their attention to the people's voice, I am ready to take the next step. This evening I will send out a provocation against President Puppet. Narcissistic and self-centered as he is, he won't be able to ignore it. Raban, honey, what are you getting yourself into? You don't have to do this. I'm not getting myself into anything. I have always been right at the center of it. What is this going to achieve? What do you want? What do I want? What do I want? I want my country back. I called to warn you about the consequences. The people's voice will gain even more attention, and it won't only be from our followers. 
The nation's government, Kassert's close allies, nationalists and patriots, they will all try to hurt me, find an excuse to arrest and extradite me, but I won't give them any reason to. And you won't either. Uh, of course not. Leave us out of your plans, Raban. We want nothing to do with them. Don't you understand? It's not my choice. They are not giving me an option. There's always a choice. No, not always. I'm relying on you both. If there is any weakness between us, they will find it, and they will exploit it. You are the only people that I trust. The only people that matter to me. I've got work to do now. Goodbye. Uh... Karen, uh, are you... are you... Yeah, yeah, I'm... Uh, I can't. Let's not talk now, please. Okay. Uh, in case you do want to talk, though, you know... I do. Bye, Ilya. Bye. Okay. Interesting. So, he claims he's not going to do anything that gives them the ability to extradite him. So, he claims he's not planning to actually commit a crime. Karen of the three of them seems the least into it. And at the end there... Karen and Ilya seem a little bit close. Might be something we can use. Actually, there was something at the beginning as well. Hang on, but apparently it, it can't actually be pulled over, though. I thought it was potentially interesting. Hang on, where was it? Yeah, is that why you kept that old notebook? Which might have been a bit of evidence previously, I've just forgotten. But fine, it isn't uh, highlightable. So what have you. So, if there's any weakness between us, yeah, fine. Let's just move that over at this early point of the day. Is time actually moving on, by the way? I don't think it is just yet. Okay. And Amplified has moved straight on to saying, yeah, let's dig into Ilya and Karen. I agree. Karen is probably the weak point that we can actually utilize potentially. Ah, and time is now moving on. 10 minutes per uploaded bit of data. Fine. And here we go. I'm going to send out a provocation against Kassart, but we don't know what that is yet. And apparently, Kassat is known for not exactly having a mild temperament, so will be easy to provoke. Got it. And here we go properly. So, Ilya and Karen have now become people of interest. Let's start building a profile of that. Ah, here's a good starting point. So, Ilya's logged in to the People's Voice backend. And with that, we've got ourselves a machine we should be able to hack into. That will just be marvellous. And let's also give him a... Oh, sadly, I can't give him a photo. That is a shame. Uh, if I put a photo over to... Nope, I can't give him an image just yet. And of course, just a reminder, this game is happening simultaneously alongside the previous one. So yeah, the Stelligan University bombings and Freedom Plaza bombings are still occurring. And here we go. There's a little separate editor's tab here that gives me the images and jobs or whatever. Let's just get some basic information shoved down here. So there we are, there's his job as well, marvellous. And this leads us to his kind of like Facebook type thing. So he claims he is the captain of the USS Voyager. I doubt that. Let's disable that to save ourselves some time. Birthday, that is useful. Get that over there. As is his current place of residence, that will be of use too. Because that might affect where he is, where he's likely to be, etc. Sure. Now, do we actually want his interests? Hmm, potentially the interest of geocaching and writing. That might be useful for us being able to... Yeah, if we could actually find him on a geocaching website, maybe there'd be a trail showing where he was when. Could potentially be of use. He also likes retro sci-fi, trains, robot dinosaurs, and fancy novels. I like this guy. We're going to pin it on someone who's not this guy. Looking at my bank account, I got myself the cash to quit my Watergate job soon. Then it'll finally be good by Bonton. So, ah, employee at Watergate Farmer, plans to quit his job and leave Bonton, has acquired money. Well, that's all very useful. Where'd the money come from? And Ampleford raises the question, does Raban know about that? Well, presumably he does, because this guy's literally posting it publicly. <laughs> and yeah, where's the actual money come from? And indeed, someone raises below, WTF, aren't you chronically broke? So where has all of this giant pile of money come from here? And one useful bit of information here, he claims he's still single, but he might not necessarily be. Let's just make a note of that. 
in case anything comes up later indicating it's not true. Oh, something very important. We've got a draft in the People's Voice Admin panel. Now, I missed this last time, so let's definitely actually keep an eye on this one. So, uh, Raban Vart, Kassat is not who appears to be. Our President Kassat is nothing but a hypocrite. He's the one who incites conflicts. He never solves them. This whole mess our country is in is his fault. Plus, he looks like his hair has been tumble dried too hot and then dragged for a puddle of horse diarrhea. I can't rewrite that. You're right, it doesn't have enough all caps in it. Make every third word all caps and then it'll be genius. Update on Raban's PC that we do our visibility of, by the way. He recently... <laughs> He just looked up. Yeah, Cassart's dirty secrets. Yeah, one hell of a journalist this guy is. I would just literally Google. Are there any dirty secrets I could report on? <laughs> Marvellous, Raban. You're a bloody genius, mate. Now, let's go into his employee profile over at Watergate. What can we learn here? No need to update that photo. Just disable that. I'm fine with the first one. Let's save ourselves the time. Uh, so, employed there from 2013. So, he's been there about four odd years. And we've got ourselves an internal work phone. So the implication is he still works there right now. And I think that was the implication last time as well. So in case any calls actually come in or leave that number, let's get that uploaded. So we joined in 2013 after leaving the outer Bonton reception camp he had been assigned to. Okay, so that's presumably the same camp that, uh, yeah, Raban himself was at, I think. And he's a reliable member of the laboratory workforce. Lab wouldn't be the same without him. Reliable, but apparently there's a conflict somewhere. Fine. Uh, leave that for the time being. Uh, what does he actually do? Support team around section C and B of Watergate product line, which are assigned to further develop Watergate products on the one hand, explore and research potential new pharmaceuticals on the other. So sounds like lab work. Uh, aha! Here we are. Yeah, lab assistants, animal cage cleaning... Laboratory assistance, but no login detected on the 13th, which was yesterday. Let's make a note of that, because that could be important. So in which case, where was he yesterday? Because he wasn't there. And wasn't there a phone call that specifically he said, Oh, I'm at work, Raban, I can't speak right now. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I thought that was the case. Now uh, here we go, a message on the same website to him. So, receiving this memo because you didn't log in, fine. Please provide a statement describing your reasons for your failure to log in ASAP. If you fail to do so by 8am tomorrow morning, you will receive an immediate termination. Okay, also, intriguing, critical medical supplies are missing. According to our internal auditing team, the following supplies are currently unaccounted for. We urge you to help clarify the circumstances of your own presence, as well as the disappearance of these medications. The date of removal has been pinpointed to the day he didn't log in. Okay, well, let's actually make a note of that. And particularly of interest, because if we could actually prove he was some way responsible or make a good enough case for it, we could go for arrest on him, but not because of his work as a journalist. Oh, I'm definitely the bad guy. No, Amplified's the bad guy. I'm going to do the best I can of a very bad job. Now, a couple more messages in there. What do we have going on here? So a message from his boss requesting findings on nutritional pace tests. Okay, sorry I won't have time. My work on production testing for the next supply drop for the armed forces takes priority. The order is much bigger than we anticipated. Since when do you get to make those calls? I'm your damn supervisor. I'm aware of that. This is more urgent. Look, I don't know what the hell is up with you lately. You've been coming in late. You've been chatting. You keep swapping shifts on short notice. Okay, so that obviously is contradictory to reliable. Well, if his boss is accusing him of that on the one hand versus like a public page on the website on the other, that one's more likely to be true because that's a private message between the two of them. So yeah, that one is way more likely to be true. And we also know who his boss is, so let's actually make a note of that just in case he's more important than we currently think. And finally, yeah, supply drop for the armed forces. What's that about? Ah, Ampleford can indeed clarify, with the unstable situation in Parges, it's crucial to keep our peacekeeping troops supplied at all times. Ah, for the nation's troops who are back in Parges. Fine, okay. And then we got one more note here as well. Ah, here we go. His excuse for not logging in is, he's got a date coming on, April 13th. Could you take the shift? But no. That guy says Matt would fire both of us if he finds out. Seems to have been for you lately. No problem, we'll just switch unofficially. 
Okay, we'll just switch off the box. They won't know anything happened. I need to go on this date. Must be an amazing woman. You know what? I'll do it. You seriously owe me for this one. So, according to this... Yeah, this guy, Roland Ellison, did the work for him on the 13th, but surely he knew he couldn't do it off the books because if he didn't log in, then the system would know... Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's his excuse anyway, so uh, let's make a profile for Roland Ellison. And yeah, Mark, this is his excuse for not being here on the 13th, but who takes an entire day off work for a date? Dates don't last an entire day. Not normally, anyway. And as time ticks by, yes indeed, the article just keeps kind of forming up in different ways over on the people's voice back end. Various attacks on him, but nothing we can use at this point. Nothing particularly interesting. New tweet, however. Tonight I shall publish an article regarding Cassart and his lies. I will prove a groundbreaking revelation that the National Liar would never write about. Media corruption. Okay. In all fairness, we know from looking back end that so far he doesn't seem to have much. I mean, he was literally googling dirty secrets about Cassart a while ago. So, uh, whatever's going on, yeah, interesting. Let's go over to, yeah, the point where he came to the country. Because we know he came from Pargesia too. So this here was when he actually immigrated at the same time as a refugee as his brother. So, a couple of basic bits and pieces we should probably keep here. Social security number probably doesn't actually hurt. Uh, where he was from originally, again, that does not hurt, and down below, date of registration. Again, this is all very, very useful stuff, and ignore the stuff up there in the red. That's just pertaining to the first game, it's fine. Yeah, Raban is coming across as a worse and worse journalist now. <laughs> he's just promised to, uh, yeah, expose a great, terrible secret about Cassart, and now he's just read an article, 30 things you didn't know about President Cassart, and is President Cassart really a mafia boss? From flipping gossip news. Dot, uh, TNA. Ah, oh, marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. So basically, Raban's got nothing. He's just bluffing with an empty hand right now. He doesn't know any secret he can reveal. Now, let's go over to Ilya's computer. Because. Ooh, nice backdrop. Yeah, because we got access to this previously. Uh, so. Member of the Hand of Blood fan club. Won an award playing cards. New portraits. Okay, not sure we necessarily need that, to be honest. One award playing cards might be nice, but... Okay, go on then. He's nice and smiley on that one. Actually, I think I prefer the photo I've got. Yeah, I might just disable that. I'm not sure that's really that important. And he is indeed a massive Trekkie. Again, we don't need that. Leave that be. Uh, okay. Anything he deleted recently? Overdue rent. Now... Where's all this money he's talking about come from if he can't even afford his rent? And yes, there we go, a private email address. Now that's useful. As indeed is an actual address where he lives. Once again, a note about the debt he appears to be in. So he couldn't afford his rent and, more importantly, we've got a bank account down there. Lovely. He needs money and let's actually have a look at his bank account. Now, we can't actually pull this over to his profile yet, but he's clearly planning to build a website here. He's got the layout and the CSS, and here's the actual text. I'm glad you found my website. I'm a professional psychotherapist with a degree in psychology and medicine. I offer advice, mentoring, and support for victims of armed conflict, especially war, escapees, and refugees. Send me a personal message if you'd like to talk about your experiences. Except, except is that for him? Because I'm not sure we have any particular evidence that he is a qualified professional psychotherapist. We know he works in a lab and we know that he writes. If anything, this is more likely to be a website he's building for Karen. Because she certainly did some form of support and outreach work with war escapees and refugees. So potentially he's building a website for her? Could be. Make a note of that. Think about it later, but nothing we can pull over yet. Now a couple of photos here. We've got, yeah, when we were very young.jpg. I'm assuming that's going to be him and Raban. But this one's interesting. A photo of a woman on the beach. The camera's close enough that there's no way it's just a random photo. That's someone who knew that he was taking her photograph. 
So who's that if he claims he's single? Unless, of course, he did indeed go to the beach with her on the 13th, whoever that is. And I'm starting to get suspicious that he might be having an affair with Karen. Just a vague working theory. Other than that, I don't think there's anything of interest in his computer yet, anyway. And it looks like Raban is done writing his article and scheduled it for 6pm. So we are now on a time limit until that article comes out, but what's he actually found that he's planning to expose? A variety of claims related to, yeah, he owns the media, he owns the legal system, his family is involved in crime, diddly diddly d. No actual proof of any of it though. And rather hilarious at the end, yeah. We always check our stories and our sources are reliable. <laughs> we know for a fact this guy has just been googling random gossip sites for rumours about Cassard, but we've got a ticking clock. Better let Ampleford know about that. Nope, needs to be attached to the right person though. So this is what the provocation is. Whatever our course of action is, we need to take it before 6pm. Okay, time is now ticking past. Every day chunk is 10 minutes. I like the new time system. The new time system is excellent. Right, back to Ilya, the smart bank. What can we... Aha! Well, this is the critical one here. He gets a big pile of money from an anonymous person. That is critical. And Ampleford's making a connection here. Yeah, the supply is disappearing. Speculating that potentially someone has, say, bought those supplies off him in bulk. Could be. Now, we know what his regular salary is, $1,590, so he got about three months' salary in one go there. We don't need to know that. So, fetch us money from Oak Street ATM regularly. Is that important? I don't feel like that's necessarily important. I mean, hmm. Okay, what else is useful here? I mean, he lives in Bonton. He could just be taking cash out. That doesn't strike me as important. That, yeah. Leave that for now. Maybe come back to his bank account later. Instead, let's actually see what Karen's getting up to. Because we kind of need to know what's... Well. Well, 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 well. Obviously, I can't prove it just yet. But wouldn't you say that it's a remarkable coincidence that Karen whose hair is about that colour, wouldn't you say, if you had to, that potentially... Hmm, no, maybe not quite the same colour. But then again, could just be the light. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. I'm not sure whether that's necessarily supposed to be the same person yet. Uh, side by side. No, can't tell. I mean, it could be. Could be, I'm just not quite sure. Right, let's start building a profile for Karen here. We need to do something about this. We need to make sure we're okay with her. However, with the time limit on our hands right now, we can, I think, disable her interest in yoga and green tea. She lives in Bonton. Birthday, get that in. It might provide a useful cross-reference of some description. We need some basic information about her. Where she is might also be of use, yes. Let's just start building a basic profile here bit more detail that might be of use. Yeah, counselling deserted army veterans, organising festivals, counselling Pargesian refugees. Yeah, just starts building a profile of her behaviour. Sure, and that does indeed lead to something useful. The deserter especially. Fine, deserters aren't granted social support easily. In fact, due to the safety bill, they're prohibited from it. Okay, let's have a look. See, again, if we wanted to arrest her then that might be of interest. A National Army veteran I'm counselling who courageously rejected the war and left the army. Fine. So, I might not have time to get both of these people. I might have to choose one to arrest. Okay. And from what she's written here, things can be difficult for refugees. I know it's not easy to speak up. If you have any problems, contact me. Yeah, the website that Ilya's building is totally for Karen. This is very, very interesting. Okay. Let's see what else we can find. Ah, now you see, this photo here, this photo here could be that person. The hair is about the same colour there 
that's possible. So this is her, like, Instagram account or whatever. Uh, so insert location name or address here to search through your album. Okay, so I need to get an address for her. Then I can search her albums or something. Fine. And these are the only public pictures. Got it. Here we go. We've got an address for her on the internal area of her actual website there. So she is a therapeutic counsellor. Yeah, that website's 100% for her. Her and Ilya are close, I think. There's the address. That's very important. And here we are. If we want information about a patient, we need to enter the patient's full name or social security number. Now that's potentially quite doable because we have Ilya's social security number. So let's check if we can make that work. So Ilya, I think we know that about you. Now Ilya might or might not actually have ever had counselling from her when he was a refugee. Let's find out. And... Okay, lovely. What do we need to know about you? And I think we also have Raban's social security number. We got that yesterday. So, as a result, we can have little Luxy here. Patient is inactive. Fine. So, former patient. So, Mr. Vart has been taking care of his brother with great devotion. Except, apparently, there's a conflict somewhere. Fine. However, he's also shown signs of severe distress and trauma. Anxiety, nightmares, lack of appetite. Let's make a note of that because it might lead to some medical documentation that could be useful down the line. But I need to start being careful with what I'm uploading here. Time is ticking by. And the fact that their relationship is, yeah, former patient, fine. Let's make a note of that. That could theoretically be of use. Now, Rabam, we do indeed already know your social security number as well. Now, what can we learn about you, if anything, new? He feels deeply responsible for what has happened and is unable or unwilling to describe the exact events. He is reclusive and aggressive when confronted with questions regarding the incident. Okay, now that might be useful. If we were to want to do something to provoke him, that could be useful information for us to possess. Yes. And in addition, yeah. As Ampleford brings attention to, why does he feel responsible? Well... We know he did some form of deal or something with the armed forces to try and provide security to the school, which might have backfired. Hmm, interesting. Now, back to her Instagram account, and with her address, let's see if we can hack in here. Is that sensitive data good enough? Lovely. Right, so, pictures marked as private. We look genuinely happy, the perfect couple finally moving in together. Life was simply wonderful, and it seemed as if it couldn't get any better. Was it true? He always used to tease me while I was on the phone. He hasn't done that for a long time, but more importantly, we've got ourselves a unique ID for a mobile phone. Let's get that in there. And what else do we have down here? Never managed to get him away from this place. I don't think he even noticed me taking this picture. Nothing particularly important, but that new bit of phone ID, that could be very, very useful indeed. Okay, I think we've gone through all the data in the reader there. Everything for now, at least. That'll do for the time being. Over to the insider. Yeah, here we go. Uh, what do we have here? Apparently, something new on Raban Vart's desktop, potentially. Well, I don't see anything new there right now, unless I'm missing something. Fine, let's go over to her phone in that case. No doubt a whole bunch of stuff we can find there. Thank you for everything. New glasses. Okay, nothing major potentially. Oh no, Rita's new glasses. Okay, don't know who Rita is, but fine. Let's get back to your desktop, please. What do we have here? Contacts. Aha, a new number for Ilya. Well, that's certainly useful as well. Let's get into his phone too. Anything else of note here? Do any of these names jump out at me? Um, no. None of these I look at and think, oh yeah, that's really important. That's that person from wherever. Okay, leave that for the time being. Move on to the calendar. 
Uh, patient session. Okay, has a patient session scheduled for... Why is that important? Sophia Radic. Hmm, why would that be important? I'm not sure. And then more people... Okay, that one's more important right here. Because we know that this here was supposed to be an inactive patient. They weren't supposed to be seeing each other anymore. And yet they are seeing each other at 7pm on the same day that Ilya told his friend, you got to cover for me, I've got a big date. So, that's all a little bit suspicious, I would say. <laughs> Let's see what Amford has to say about that. Yeah, why have a session with an inactive patient? Something's not quite right. Indeed, something is not. This, however, I think... Oh, do I need to create profiles for these people? Leave it for the time being. But remember, there are a few more people there. Hang on, just remember their names. Um, Radic and Kavachi. Remember those guys. They may become relevant down the line. Okay. Raban, hey, my love. Hello, dear. I'm super busy right now. Can't really text. I'll catch up with you later. Love you. On the 13th. When, yeah... She was actually seeing his brother. Interesting. She also had a voice chat with another patient, presumably, talking him for a panic attack. And here we go. We've got information that gives us a bit more on her. Uh, my you tell, which again is like, I don't know, Facebook or something. Right. It's a new account anyway. Get that over there. That's going to lead to something new. So that's very important. Ah, now here we go. The deserter she's counselling, we have a name, or at least a first name, Molly. Now that's important, get that in there. Now according to this, yeah, has a session arranged with Molly on the evening of April 13th, but that's the same point there's nothing marked in her calendar apart from meeting Ilya. So what's going on here exactly? Yeah, exactly. What is... Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. What is going on here? We need to find out whether there's a legal record of this Molly in Karen's files. If not, she'll be in serious trouble. I doubt you'll find anything with just Molly. We need a full name. Okay. Oh. Okay. Molly messaging Karen. Yeah. Let's read that right now. Where are you? Can you please get back to me? So, this is a message between the two of them occurring... Yeah, on the 14th, i.e. right now it's live. Hey, Karen, what is it? So, what is going on here? We had a session scheduled for this morning. Remember, I forgot, sorry. Can we reschedule? Oh, I like the fact it's done like where they're typing at each other, so the messages aren't quite in the right order. <laughs> it's very realistic. You can't just forget our sessions, this is serious. I had to work urgently at Circle Mall. It just came up. Okay, we've already rescheduled it before. Yeah, because you suddenly wanted to. So, presumably, Karen cancelled the appointment in the evening because she had to see Ilya instead. Marvellous. And what about your kid? He needs his mother. Listen, you don't have children. You have a good job. You've no idea what it's like. Zero. Okay, so they're just yelling at each other over a chat program right now. I'm not sure that's important, though. The fact that Karen has no children... Actually, it could be important. I might just move that over, because in theory... Oh, no, I'm not allowed to until the end of the chat. Okay. What else do we have here? Ah, here we go. So, maintains a private counselling website, and we know about that, because Ilya made it for her, or at least we think he did. Yeah, so that's going to be how we link to her. Okay. And also, taking photos even though I said no. Hmm. We might be able to find photos of her on the phone or something. And also, apparently something's going on over on Twitter. Uh, we'll get onto that in a second. So, uh, yeah. The fact she doesn't have children, I'm going to leave that because we don't have time. Like, it's already 20 to 4 and we need to take action before 6pm. Yep, here we are. So, private counselling website and the fact Molly contacted her there. That's got to be crucial. And everything suddenly happening. Something over on Raban's messaging thing. Okay. 
What have we got here? To David Johns. Okay, in need of your advice. Karen, my wife and I, there's so much distance between us and it's only growing. She's spending so much time with her job where she's secretly actually cancelling appointments to meet up with Ilya. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, I was totally right. I'm going to be 100% right on that. And Raban apparently is feeling discouraged. Okay, as he's the central person in this investigation, we do need to pass that over to Amplefoot. Ah, but... Apparently, the allegations on Blabber um, are something to do with Karen. Right, we probably need to get back over to the flipping reader right the hell now. What is going on here? So, hashtag the people silencing. Fine, so apparently it's gone public that the wife is meeting an army deserter. But it's not really his fault, it's not really his responsibility. WTF, didn't you say you were against the National Army? The people silencing. Okay, interesting your wife is conducting private counselling sessions with National Army veterans unofficially, because officially she's meeting your brother. What else is she trying to hide? Or should I say, what are you? The people silencing. Okay, so stuff is going on here, and also there's a new draft. I think the draft has just changed. Ah, I think it's basically the same article, but with all of the all caps added in. <laughs> Marvellous. Now, something we can't do anything with yet, but back to Karen's phone here. We're happy to confirm your friend Damn Good Coffee's accepts your promotional code for Singular. Okay, so she's got 2,000 love credits for that. And just want to... Yeah. Boom. I knew it. I flipping knew about that website. That's fine. And here's where it gets interesting. Hey, Ilya not here. Okay, okay, sorry, yeah. They totally crossed the line in some capacity here. Right, get the website found, because we can find that using the stuff on his desktop. And yep, straight back to where I originally mentioned. So, we have got that website there, and we can find that through the title. Oh, I knew that was going to be important, lovely. Now, before we jump ship to that, however, uh, have we checked out everything on her phone? I think we have at this point. We've gone for all her messages. Yeah, fine. So now it's literally nothing but... Well, okay. At this point, I need to make a choice. Either we're looking to pin her or we're looking to pin Ilya. Because I don't have time to do both. I can only upload, like, yeah, nine or so more bits of data. So, let's have a look at the website. But bear in mind, over on the bank, we do still have this information that I could put over, which doesn't seem relevant to me. I don't see how that's necessarily important. That's definitely not important. That, that can't be important, but... Okay, let's just look. Don't upload anything unless it is crucially important. We do not need that. That's basically close enough to already known information. So on the website, one of the stories down right at the bottom is information about Molly. I served for six years. I was in charge of my own squad. I was a well-respected combat engineer. Dishonorably discharged in 2011 after I went AWOL because of personal issues. I was so much to the nation as a deserter, flushed down the toilet of life by the administration of the army, the government, and the safety bell. Working low-wage jobs, living in a crappy apartment in the industrial quarter, and I can hardly afford... Hang on. That's the se That's the woman from the first game. That's 100% the woman from the first game, isn't it? I think it flipping is, yes. There's, um, one of the women in the first game was totally fitting that profile, who in my playthrough kind of got shot and killed. Uh, but I think the actual newspaper recorded in this universe, the actual canon version is, she wasn't, she was brought in alive. So, Karen promised to organise Council for Molly. We already know that. Don't waste 10 minutes on that. Instead, go into the messages. Let's see what we've got here. Yeah, Molly's message. This is where we've got to find something. So they go backwards and forwards. Molly's not really interested in having a chat, though. I'd suggest the cafe at Freedom Plaza for a meeting. Okay, that at least gives us a location. Now, I'm starting to have some questions about Karen here. Like, I'm going through the other messages that aren't strictly relevant. I'm not submitting them, so time's not passing. But people are coming to her for help, and she's doing things like saying, Oh, your story's a common one. Would you please let me publish it on my blog? And they're like, I'm not actually sure about that. And she's like, I would urge you to let me publish your story. 
which is odd. And then Diane Coleman contacts her with a fairly harrowing story of domestic abuse directed at a child. And her response is, Sorry, I can't help you. My website only deals with victims of armed conflict and ex-soldiers who are dealing with war trauma. Your case is too off-topic for me. I am sorry. That's a bit cold and brief. Like, you know, maybe provide the person with a link to relevant resources where they can actually turn. Hmm, Karen might not be quite what she appears. Yeah, here's even more. How about I conduct a you tell phone session with you and we go through the options together on how to help your daughter. In return, you tell me a few more details about your recent experience of fleeing from Pages and allow me to publish your story on Open Soteria. She's not really helping these people, she's trading information about them for her blog for a little bit of help. Hmm. This is... Something's weird with Karen that we haven't got to yet. Something's very weird about her. And once again, more information from Raban's PC. <laughs> this time, he's just... Yeah, he's just basically stealing other people's journalism and passing it off as his own. He's a quite pathetic figure on this particular occasion. Well, here's a downright weird one, which is in Karen's phone, there's a mobile number for Molly. So I'm not sure why on earth I wouldn't be able to pull that across, because that's blatantly something I'd want, but sadly I cannot. Now, there was also a hint of, uh, yeah, you wouldn't stop taking photos even when I said you shouldn't. Hmm. But that doesn't seem to have gone anywhere either. Interesting. Okay, I'm at a bit of a dead end when it comes to Karen for the time being. The only lead I think I've got for her is that Utel account. Except that doesn't seem to have opened anything up in the listener or the insider or the reader. That doesn't seem to have opened up anything there at all. Okay, in which case I'm going back to the smart bank. Let's see if this leads anywhere. Maybe a CCTV camera overlooks that or something. So, not the safest part of town, especially if you're carrying cash. But no, that doesn't go anywhere. Ooh. Well, this is interesting. Where do we go next? Aha! The game is totally willing to concede that I was right. There is a photo of Karen inside his phone. The game is saying that is her. I knew it. I flipping knew it. Right, okay. Where am I going next at this point, though? I'm actually struggling to find stuff to upload here, so stuff that previously I wasn't adding in, I'm going to toss in now, just because... Yeah. I need to find something. I haven't got a good lead on either of these people right now. Oh, wait a minute! The Instagram account! Insert location name. Location name. Location name. Location name. Okay, Freedom Memorial. And... That's gonna get us. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep. There we go. Okay. I've got it. I've figured it out. It's fine. We've only got an hour to sort this out here. But, as I suspected, yeah, Molly is Nina, who is from the first game. Who, by now, has probably been taken into custody... Uh, okay. This is fine. Sadly, she wouldn't let me take any pictures of her. Okay. Let's just move that over. That's crucial. And we've also got... Oh! New messages coming in here. So, Raban. Actually, did you meet Ilya yesterday? Oh! Right. Time to see whether she tries to hide it. Because, yeah, they're totally having an affair. Or at least, well, maybe... Maybe. There's certainly a photo of her in a bikini in Ilya's phone, and he texts her with, like, hey you, which is very coupley. So, hmm. You believe a random guy telling you things about me? Yeah, she's denying it fine, so it's definitely true. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. I've been told she's not an official patient of yours. You're covering for her with Ilya. Now, why is Ilya... That doesn't make sense. No, the affair story makes a lot more sense. What the hell is this an interrogation? All right, fine. You're right. Nina isn't official business. I'm counseling her. As far as the council's concerned, it's for Ilya. Hmm. Okay, it's a pretty flimsy cover story given he's marked as inactive on the government's own website, but okay. 
It's not exactly legal. You've been taking care of that army woman all night illegally. See, this is exactly why I didn't tell you. Okay, if they're not having an affair, Ilya really wants it to be an affair. All right, blatantly. And, oh, that's not going to go down well. Raban yelling, I'm not allowed to threaten the reputation of the people's voice, as if his blog is more important than her trying to provide medical assistance to, uh, yeah, someone who's suffering from PTSD. Okay, I've got to go check on someone. Karen, someone who actually needs me. I'm sorry. Oh, bit late. Bit late for that. So, do we have a conflict for this? So, admitted to misusing Ilya Sessions for Nina... Not necessarily true, however. Now, if I had to guess, her phone's going to light up at some point very soon indeed. I'm just going to go quickly shoving in some additional place names into Instagram to see if, yeah, here we go. So, there absolutely is some more stuff inside her Instagram. I'm just going to go through all the locations to check for what's going on here. Aha. Uh -huh. Oak Street. Let's check Oak Street and his address. Okay, if there was going to be something... Yeah, hang on. This address right here. His address. Come on, let's have some evidence of an affair here. No, sadly not. Now, the thing is, we know that that information also isn't true. Because the message between her and Molly was like, we had a session this morning. So, we know she cancelled that session last minute herself. So, she didn't actually meet with Nina or Molly the time when she's supposed to have been doing so. Now, because I can't see anything else happening right now, I'm going to update this photo just to see if that gets a remark out of Ampleford about the theoretical potential affair. Let's see what we got here. And, yes indeed, the reader did just update. The draft's updating. Ah, I was hoping someone would show up in the listener or the insider, given she was saying, I've got to go and speak to someone else. If I get into an absolute emergency, I could use this, even though there's a conflicting data chunk somewhere I haven't found yet. Nina isn't official business. I'm counselling her as far as the council's concerned. It's for Ilya. I suspect that's a lie to cover up her affair, but I could still use it as good enough evidence to arrest her to do something just to basically be an evil dick because that's what Ampleford's telling me to do. But I'd like to try and solve the Nina situation first. Now, the hint was, or what Ampleford was implying was, I need to try and get a photo. Now, I think there is a photo because if I go to her chat with Nina, hang on, talk, talk, talk is all you do and taking photos even though I said no. So there is a photo somewhere, okay, and it's got to be found through searching on the reader of the Instagram account. But the photos that show up for Freedom Plaza do not have an identifiable second person in them. We can see the Freedom Plaza. I need a more specific address. I know there's a photo somewhere. Okay, I've got one last stupid theory. Because otherwise I'm completely stuck and I'll just basically throw the conflicted data chunk about her covering for speaking to Nina with Ilya. When I'm pretty certain that's not true based on the other stuff I've seen. This has been brought up before. That's a game he's into. And it shows up in this conversation. Now, it's the only connection I've got at this point. I just basically ruled it out. Because I couldn't think of anything that would be relevant to that. It just struck me as a stupid bit of background information. But there might be a connection between the two of them. If that's maybe what they were doing when they met up. Like, not sex, but instead card game. It could theoretically be a connection that's of use. Uh, hang on, who did I actually... It was on his timeline, if I recall correctly. Yeah, here we are. Flipping Hand of Blood. Like, I didn't bother enabling this because it struck me as pointless, but it is a connection that's been brought up since. It's literally the only thing I can think of, short of throwing something that's actually contested into the thing. Oh, you're bloody kidding. You're absolutely bloody kidding. That's actually found something. We've only got time for three more data chunks. Yes, I know! <laughs> 
And now I'm flipping busy trying to go through his bloody Hand of Blood fan club. Because I don't know if that's relevant. So a whole bunch of card game statistics. Fine, but... But, 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 but... If he played her on the 13th, then, then just in theory, in some stupid wacky theory, please tell me that. So yeah, get, get, get the name down there. Get it in there. Please insert name. For, I just did. If this actually cocking worked, no. Okay, that didn't work. Ugh, I was kind of hoping that would. Right. So, we entered her name. Could she be going under a pseudonym or something? Like, the game doesn't provide you with the purple things unless there's something to shove in them. So, insert the name of your opponent. I'll try... Oh, why didn't that work? Unless, of course, we've got a Utel account right here. That might finally be what this is for. Please. Please. Oh, gosh darn it. I've thrown every single bloody name I've got into this box. My only hope is that uploading this stupid information might get me something new, but probably Amphib is just going to yell at me about this. Uh, yeah. Fine. That didn't help. Okay. I've got one thing I can do, which is if it gets to 10 to 6, the final bit of information I can throw in is indeed, yeah, the actual uh, misusing Ilya Sessions for Nina, which I know is not true. And quite frankly, I've got the evidence for that, but apparently I just don't have the evidence quite in the right bloody way. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, too. I need to find a pseudonym for Karen, which basically just lets me shove that into the fan site, and that's going to prove, probably, they were together on the 13th, which will provide cover for... Oh, dear. Right. I don't know. I'm genuinely lost. So here's the thing. Based on the objectives, it's my view that neither of these people are actually doing the illegal thing we suspect them of. Instead, what we're pretty confident of is, uh, yeah, he actually wasn't going on a date, or rather he was going on a date. He snuck out for his affair with Karen. Karen, meanwhile, is not legally counselling the deserted National Army veteran. Ilya in her calendar is cover for that. In fact, she's having the affair with Ilya and almost certainly was on that evening. And probably they were hanging out together and playing Hand of Blood or whatever on the evening of the 13th and may or may not have actually slept together that same evening too. Certainly there's plenty of evidence that she was spending a lot of time away from home and at work when, yeah, her candle looks a bit suspiciously empty. Like, what's totally going on here is those two are having an affair and that's not actually illegal, but I do have a confession from her in private that she was actually, yeah, doing the, um, doing the counselling. But I know she actually wasn't. She was just doing it in her free time. And if she's doing it in her free time, not on the books, it's not a crime. So she's done nothing wrong. So I don't want to just basically throw her to the wolves, even though I could do that with the conflicted data chunk. I'd also like to try throwing the name Soteria into the actual box down there, as that's clearly a username she has used online. But no, that actually mysteriously doesn't go against her pseudonyms or her accounts, even though it blatantly should do. Oh bloody hell, I found something! Yes, back at the rehabilitation council thing. Here we are. Now I've got her full proper name. Nina Matanova can actually have a proper patient ID. Veteran of the National Army, Karen Levine Vart. Okay. We've got something new here. Obviously we know this detail already, or at least you did if you played the first game. So yeah, severe trauma, death of her boyfriend, generally not a good time for her. Procedure. She is being psychologically treated by Mrs. Karen Levine Vart, receiving treatment pro bono as per Levine Vart's request. Right. So, is that illegal or not? Hang on, the conflict there is. Nina isn't official business, so, hmm. 
I'm counselling her as far as the council's concerned it's for Ilya, or receiving treatment pro bono, which... Ugh. Apparently there's a law against, like, deserters receiving treatment, but if it is... Hmm... I've got to upload that. I mean, that's... That's actually true. That is... True. And... I don't know what Amplifit has to say about that. I've only got 10 minutes left. I'm not going to stop this. Um, and that's just brilliant, brilliant. So it is an official job after all. It means we have lost sense as far as Karen's concerned. Okay. Uh-oh. You want me to turn to... Oh, dear. Right. I've been making my mind about this whole card playing thing that Ilya has going. He won a tournament playing cards, so we should rule out the possibility that he received... Oh, Right. Yes. Um, he did win that tournament, didn't he? And because he won... Oh, cock. Right, do I have any leads at all at the minute? I could slap a photo of Nina, but that is not important right now. At flipping all. But unfortunately... Karen has apparently just gone cold, because apparently because it wasn't actually paid, it didn't count. So, now we've got... No, no, wait. Soteria. Please, please tell me by any chance that's actually her username. Cock, no! That's the one lead I've got left. What goes in that cocking box? My only two objectives now are, yeah, Ilya or Karen... And Karen, unfortunately, is in the clear. It's legal because she's not, like, charging for it. So I suppose the state's not paying for it. So it's not any of their business. So now, ugh, literally one data chunk to find out whether the money's been acquired illegally. And it's probably not. It's probably been acquired from that tournament. The only other mention of Hand of Blood is, yeah, that conversation with... Roland Ellison. Seriously, since when have you been so good at Hand of Blood? I've always been this good, you just didn't know it yet. But nothing I can actually utilise there, unfortunately. Except, hang on. You smashed me good last night. Congrats again. April 9th. When was the tournament? If the tournament was April 8th, then that was probably his opponent. Presumably. And... Unfortunately, I don't have a dates. Unless, of course, there's a date right here. Hang on. Win more than... Win more than $10,000. Except... Wait, hang on. Win more than $10,000. Go back to his cocking bank account here, because he did win. Plus 4,500. So... Why didn't he actually win the amount of money he was supposed to win? And Roland Ellison cannot actually be selected, even though I know for a fact they played each other. It all comes down to that. He just needs an alibi for the end of Thursday, April the 13th, which the only thing that can provide that at this point is going to be, yeah, the actual final game that he won in that tournament, which would also explain the money. If I can just find his opponent, that's it. That's the whole thing taken care of. But I don't know who the cocky opponent is, and none of the names I've got match. Okay, I've just spent the last basically hour going over every document one by one. I must have missed something here. I've pretty much ruled out Karen, but I've realised what the right thing to do is, which is, uh, the next data chunk, I'm supposed to be implicating one or both of Ilya and Karen in order to get them arrested, basically to try and pretty much distract Raban. But if I just don't do that, he just puts out his message. Now, that's fine, because we know his message is garbage and has basically no real intelligence or insight behind it. We've literally seen the draft. And it would be wrong to actually arrest either of these people, because they've done nothing wrong. Like, he's probably made the money from winning the tournament. They probably snuck off together and had an affair, but I can't quite figure out how to prove it yet. She was actually doing the work for free and only said she was actually counselling Nina at the time to cover up her affair with Ilya. So I'm just going to make 10 minutes pass by taking this conflicting update, though I haven't found the bloody conflict, and saying, yeah, he probably is devoted to his brother. That seems reasonable. <laughs> So I'm just going to upload that, and we're going to get to 6 o'clock. 
And there we are. Sweet, but not helpful. And... There we go. And the provocative piece has been released. Yeah, but I've already seen it. It's garbage. There's literally no flipping evidence. How the hell did that happen? Why didn't you come up with anything? What are you actually good for? Well, I'm sorry, but they didn't actually do anything wrong. I'm not going to frame people for no reason. No, I won't let that stand. I demand you get me something, no matter the cost. We can at least divert people's attention. Okay. Interesting. Apparently, I'm not going home until this is done. Until I've framed someone for no well-explained reason. But yeah, this is exactly the same article we saw before. There's like... There's no evidence here. This isn't actually a revelation of a scandal. This is just railing at him with some all caps thrown in. This is garbage. Like, we should be laughing at this guy. He's pathetic. Oh, you absolute massive asshole game. So, the thing I was supposed to be entering here was in fact, as I figured out, Roland Ellison. However, if you go over to Roland Ellison, he's unselectable, because only target people are selectable. So I didn't need to find that Roland Ellison. Instead, the only way to select Roland Ellison was to go to the connection to Roland Ellison down here in the profile activities section of Ilya. So basically, I solved it, but the game wasn't willing to acknowledge it, so I was selecting the name from the cock, you. Right. So. Basically, that just completely exonerates him. That's exactly where the money came from. So, <laughs> good news. I've got no completely zero news for you. Except now, mysteriously, at 20 to 8, so I'm an hour 40 after the deadline, something new's just started happening. What exactly is this? Maybe I wasn't supposed to be able to stop it for 6pm. Well, actually, I could have done at any point. But I feel like actually I've accidentally done the right thing here. So, hang on. Sign up for Singular Pro, gain instant access to... Yeah, it's just a, a dating surface. You receive this mail because Karen signed you up for Singular and you create an account. Okay. Well, this is literally the only bit of information left at this point. A scheduled session, now she signs into Singular. Hmm. Okay. What exactly is going on here? And why did this only come in now? So, back to that message I saw earlier. Damn good coffee. So, yeah, obviously that's his account. Except, why did that only go to his listener now when that's been there for the last couple of weeks, but okay. This is the first time I've been allowed to look at this, which is really weird, because this is blatantly information I wanted to have access to before 6pm, but I'm only allowed to actually have access to it. Yeah, I think I've accidentally done the right thing here, because the only way to resolve this before 6pm, which was when the game gave me the deadline, would have been to basically frame one or both of them. But now, because I've gone past the time limit, a bunch of new stuff started appearing later in the day that's actually exonerating them, and I suspect is going to lead into the affair. So hang on, what have we got here? Irregularities. Dear Mr. Maguire, please find my written statement below as requested. What exactly do we have going on here? I left my security guard at home, and in the absence of my colleague, decided to inform yeah, Mr. Ellison around it. Mr. Ellison assured me I'd be totally fine despite being unable to log in properly. He would get the matter sorted for me. During the entire shift, starting from 4pm, I was working on maintaining the assigned technical instrument at sections A through G. Finally finished up and left around 11.22pm. Got home where I still am. Apart from the missing security card, there were no unusual events. I did not see anyone in the labs, and I'm sure I wasn't seen by anyone else either. In short, I was at work on Thursday's planned, and I've been in the entire shift on my own. Except somewhere, there's a conflict to that. <laughs> okay, back out over here. So, damn good coffee. That's your thing. Here we are, looking for women. You know what, let's just upload everything. <laughs> At this point, screw it. We may as well just put all the information in. Ah, he's literally undateable because he doesn't like dogs. I see. And here's something interesting. We've seen this photo before. That's... Hello. Okay. That's the same photo. It was called Rita. On... Um, yeah, on Karen's phone. Right, I'm just thinking about that magical evening we had the other week at the hotel. I can't believe we're doing this dating and all. Okay, who exactly is Rita? 
because whoever this person is, they've got a connection to Karen. And by the way, it turns out that he's not particularly loyal to his brother. He instead is describing his brother as having crackpot theories. Intriguing. And here we go. Want to meet again? How about Thursday? Of course I do. Another day. I have a late shift on April 13th. Thursday would be best. Can you swap shifts? They're doing it often lately. I'll figure something out. Great, me too. I hope you don't regret spending April 13th with me instead of your late shift. Okay. So, confirmation, absolutely, that he basically, yeah, that he lied to his boss there. He snuck out and wasn't in the lab. So, whoever Mary P is, who has a connection to Karen, in fact, there's a photo, in fact, that photo on Karen's phone, which does suggest Karen is Mary P, because why else would that photo be on her phone? Except, the photo there was, hang the flip on here, hang the flip on, back to, back to the photos here, Karen's phone, gallery, Rita's new glasses, new glasses, what do you think? So, either it's a really small world, I mean that, is that potentially, sometimes it's hard to tell which character's which, because they're all so stylized. Right, back over here, ignore that, that's definitely, therefore, untrue. I'm more likely to believe this. So, he would basically snuck out to have sex during his shift, and he was on a date, and means Ilya is off the hook. Marvellous. So! There we go. At this point, we have officially cleared everyone. I've basically just exonerated everyone. Screw you all. So, Karen is calling Ilya. Hello. Karen. Hey. Why are you calling me? Like, I, I, I thought we agreed that... Something has come up. What do you mean, come up? Raban just texted me about yesterday. Shit. That's just brilliant. So he knows. No, I don't think so. There is no way he knows that I'm Mary P. He was just talking about us having a session yesterday. A session? How? Where did that idea come from? I really have no idea. But don't worry, I talked him out of jumping to any conclusions. For now, at least. If Raban finds out, you have no idea what he's going to do. What he is capable of. You're forgetting I'm married to him. Why don't you leave with me, then? I've already put Ilya, some money aside Ilya, and- please. We've talked this through. I can't just get up and leave. I just can't. You're right. So, what do we do now? Nothing. Sit tight. We probably shouldn't see each other for a while, to avoid suspicion. I understand. Good. I've got to go now. I'll touch base later. Bye, Ilya. Goodbye, Karen. Okay. So they are the same person, in which case, who the heck is Rita? <laughs> Who's Rita? Why is it labelled as Rita? That's really cocking confusing. But okay, confirmation there that that is the alias of you, Mary P. Upload that. Now what can we learn about Mary P? And at this point, I think Ampleford is basically just screwing with Rabard by tweeting at him. This is the government's great plan. We can't arrest him, but we can tweet at him. Marvellous. So back to that conversation. Yeah. So meet at a hotel. At this point, because I haven't framed either of them, instead, now basically I have to troll Raban by coming up with, ideally, oh, if I could find, if I could find the address of the hotel... Surely she wouldn't have been stupid enough to actually put photos on uh, Instagram just set to private. Oh, please tell me she's that stupid. Aha! Uh -huh. Over in the bank statements, he has booked himself a room at a hotel. Marvellous. Give me an address. Let's get an address here. Come on. Give me the address, you bloody idiot. It's really annoying it actually came out in this order. It feels a bit clunky because, yeah, Singular's only shown up now. But, like, we knew about Singular for bloody ages because there's been the the chat. This has been there from the beginning. Like, if it had just let me click through on that ages ago, then I would have been able to actually... I guess maybe I didn't know it was relevant because I didn't know that was Ilya until the listener message came through. But still, it kind of bugs me the game has kind of deliberately held me back a bit there. Come on, Bonton Park Hotel. Oh dear. Oh, Karen, you silly thing. You probably don't want to do that. I haven't felt this happy in such a long time. It was a perfect evening. What does this mean? I don't know. I just wanted this moment to last forever. 
Oh, Karen, don't actually, when you're having an affair, put the photos of it online. You keep them on an external hard drive that you keep on your person at all of us. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, don't worry, it's fine. It's fine. Let's just upload that at this point. <laughs> Yeah, that'll do it. That'll flip and do the job. I think Amplefoot will be happy with that. Marvellous. So now basically Amplefoot's just going to start tweeting that at Raban. So yeah, this has actually gone, well, it's dickish, but it's not evil. Because what would have been evil would have been rushing to frame one of these two people before 6pm. Instead, we've basically just revealed the truth, which is going to really annoy Raban. So actually, this is 100% the right way to end it. Uh, we need something illegal when we have something far more provocative. Marvellous. Absolutely flipping marvellous. <laughs> now, what's going to happen as a result of that? And oh yeah, here we go. Here comes the call. Hey. Karen, is there anything you want to tell me? Uh, no. Is there something on your mind? Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. I've been sitting here stewing. Wondering how my loving wife could have done this. Could have done what? Raban, what's wrong? Karen, are you sleeping with Iria? What? Are you crazy? <laughs> Even when you're caught red-handed, you choose to lie to me, which shows me exactly what you think of me. A fool. Raban, honey, I can't... Don't you dare call me honey. How could you do that to me? Both of you. You are not my wife anymore. That suits me fine. Typical Raban flies off the handle and won't even listen to my side of the story. You've been so cold, obsessed with your hatred of the nation for so long now. You've changed. You're always scheming, making plans, writing this hateful stuff. You scare me, Raban. Oh, and instead of talking to me about it, you decide to get into bed with my brother, of all people. For God's sake, Karen, you're a caseworker. Talking about emotional problems is your specialty. You wouldn't have listened to me anyway. It's always you first. Everyone else around you comes second. I guess Ilya just made me feel needed, truly wanted. You supplied my enemies with the ammunition they have been waiting for. Because of what? A glimpse of lust? I wanted you. I needed you. You didn't. You don't need anyone. Only yourself. I'll be home soon to get my stuff. <laughs> no, Karen. I'm not letting this end so easily. Okay. Intriguing. If only you'd found out about the affair earlier before he published the article. Physically impossible. Literally, I couldn't go through to the dating website till 20 past 7. So, screw you. And one final thing here. We've got ourselves, one, there's some live streaming going on, but two. <laughs> yeah, this is basically just the nation tweeting at Rabat. This is the best we can do. Marvellous. And we apparently have some form of live stream or something going on here over at the People's Voice to wrap things up, I assume? What is going on here? My dear followers, it might come as a surprise to you, but you aren't the only ones who are listening to me. You are not the only ones watching me. The government has been after me for a long time, snooping and prying into my personal life in a feeble attempt to discredit me. That much I was aware of and I threaded carefully day and night. But even I could not have anticipated the methods they would resolve to. You have probably seen the dirty pictures by now. They spread around the internet like a plague, showing my wife and my brother. Nothing, nothing about that is true. These are mere montages. It is a pitiful, it is a pitiful, meritless effort to antagonize me against my family, to ridicule me. But I will not shut the people's voice down, neither now nor ever. I owe it to you, my supporters, to speak out loud what needs to be said. I won't allow anyone to intimidate me. No, I will not stop. I will fight back, and more furiously than ever before. I will go after them. 
I will pick their precious lies apart one by one and expose their misdeeds so they are plain to see for everyone. All of you shall be witnesses for the truth. All right, marvelous. So, despite our best efforts, we were unable to prevent his provocation. Well, actually, we could have done, except the only way to do it would have been to basically frame either Ilya or Karen. So, I'm glad we didn't. This is, as weird as it sounds, the good ending. Because this way, no one's been framed, because that would have just given him even more ammunition. Instead, we've actually dug deep, we've found the truth, and we've exposed it. Very unpleasantly, ludicrously unpleasantly, but all we've done is expose what's actually true, and he looks truly pathetic right now. He is, he's a pathetic character. You know, he's not actually a journalist, he just recycles stories off gossip websites. And yeah, he's a, he's a sad, sad little figure, is Raban. Still, anything else or are we done for this episode? You may log off for today, yes indeed. So, I think we've done some pretty good work there. After a little bit of confusion about whether or not it could be done by 6pm, but I'm pretty confident, yeah, the only way to wrap things up by 6pm was to basically frame someone. And I'm glad I didn't, alright? I'm the nicest evil government agent you can have, I suppose. And that, of course, is it for now, because it's another two weeks until the final episode, Synthesis. So, there we go. That's the second episode. That was slightly confusing. It's slightly confusing because it felt a little less open than some of the previous Orwell episodes have been. In particular, how, like, there was blatantly stuff I spotted that I wanted to go after, but I wasn't allowed to. Like, yeah, there was her Utel account that I was never able to actually find any information about, which was really odd. That was just there, but I don't think it did anything. Which was kind of odd. And yeah, there was the thing about the dating. But I guess, like, it's actually kind of clever, in a way. A bit, like, counterintuitive at first, but it's kind of clever. Which is the only way, I think, to actually get it done by the time limit the game gives you, is to orchestrate it and fake it and do something illegal to frame someone. The only way to get the truth is to basically say, no, I'm going to ignore your stupid arbitrary deadline and actually go beyond it and wait for new information to emerge. Which is kind of clever in its own way. Oh, well, it's very clever. I do love this game. So... That was episode two. The finale, because this is only three episodes rather than five as it was in the original or well, is coming in a couple of weeks, and hopefully you'll join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Orwell Episode 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Oh no! Oh dear! America's decided they do not like us! Just want to finish off China. I can die happily. Well, not happily, because there's nuclear fire involved, but moderately happily. There we go! I've just started. Oh god. The Earth was fun, wasn't it? We can all agree, the Earth was great.